What's up, everybody? Got a new firearm today. So the Ruger 1022 that I had, I shot it a little bit, but I have my Glock 22 pistol, and it was taking up space on my rack. So I went to my local gun store, and that 22 rifle netted me this. Awesome. This is a Mossberg 590 tactical model. The one I put up here before is standard 590. This is a tactical version. It's damn near the same as the 590A1. Except it doesn't have an aluminum uh, trigger guard and heavy wall barrel. So, I got this. They wanted 600 for it. But my 22 rifle netted me this, and I had to pay like a little bit extra. Not too much. It is made in New Haven, Connecticut. It's still got the grease on it. I haven't cleaned it or anything yet. I just got it out of the box and I put it up on the rack. This one does include the bayonet lug. So I can put a bayonet on this thing if I want to. It's got this forend, which is not typical of Mossberg. Usually they have what they call the corn cob forend, but this came with this one. It's probably something new they do now. And then it has this on top. The ghost ring sight. That's what attracted me to this gun. <clears throat> the ghost ring sight and the orange glow down there on the front sight, which is no longer on this model, no longer a bead. It is a ramp sight like a rifle, and you have that orange piece where you can really see what you're aiming at. It does have, if I can get it right here, if you can see it, it does have an accu choke, <clears throat> and it is a cylinder bore choke, so I can shoot slugs, buckshot, whatever I want through it. On the barrel here, chambered for two and three quarter and three inch shells. 12 gauge, 20 inch barrel, accu choked. And on the other side, of course, we have your warning label about reading your instruction manual before use of the firearm. And it says Eagle Pass, Texas. Which I'm assuming that the gun itself is made in New Haven, Connecticut, and then their barrels are made in Eagle Pass, Texas, which is right on the on the border of Mexico. All this stuff in here is the same as the 590 I have up on my channel already. All the Mossbergs, their the pump actions, their functionality is all identical. Mossberg doesn't change it because it works. Remington does not change how their stuff is built because it works. A lot of shotgun companies will put out a shotgun, they'll make a model, and then all of a sudden the next year, we're gonna make this model, but it's gonna yeah, it's gonna we're gonna change this, or we're gonna take something off of here that was cool and dumb it down, or try and do something different with the barrel, like porting it right here, putting holes in it to help with the muzzle rise when you shoot and stuff like that. Mossberg don't do none of that, man. Mossberg and Remington, as long as it works, they keep doing it. Now, the 590A1, of course, would say 590A1 right here. But this don't. And that's okay. I don't care. Shell lifter and all that good stuff down in there. And then right here, you can see it says Mossberg, North Haven, Connecticut. 590 12 gauge. So let's talk about the, the Mossberg 500 series here. If you go out to a gun store or pawn shop and you find a Mossberg 500A, that A stands for 12 gauge. If you find a 500B, that is a, a 16 gauge. If you find a 500C, that's a 20 gauge. I no longer have the 20 gauge either. I uh, 
I sold it to my cousin to help fund this. So the twenty two rifle I traded in and the $200 he paid me for my Mossberg 20 gauge netted me this bad boy. And dude, this thing is sick. That sight right there, that ghost ring, that is something special, man. That's awesome. Has the same really nice recoil pad on it. That thing feels great against your shoulder. I haven't even shot this thing yet. Of course, right here, that's your slide lock to operate the firearm. This one has a little bit of scuffing because, you know, people have been checking it out at the store. And here is your magazine cap. Take that off. You can access your magazine to clean it if you need to. If you do want to clean your magazine on the inside, do not put gun oil in here. Just take you a few patches, get them on your cleaning rod, and just run those patches all the way down and back. Don't put any oil in here. This is not meant to have oil in it. This is meant to be dry. You can oil the barrel all you want. And you can oil the inside of the receiver, the bolt. You can do all you want with that. But keep your magazine dry. So, what else we get? I don't have the box. The box is outside. But this is the stuff you get with them. Here is your Mossberg owner's manual. Look at how thick that thing is. Here's a card. Some kind of card. What we got here? Mossberg, a proud supporter of the National Rifle Association. Save a 25% off membership. Join the NRA today. And there's your membership. You can fill out, mail this in, become a member. This explains how your trigger lock works. And then, firearm safety depends on you. Let's kind of flip her open here and see. Here's all the safety rules. Be sure of your target and what is beyond it. Use the correct ammunition. Let's go back to number one here. Let's see what they say. Let everybody see these rules in the video so that you can observe these rules. Always keep the muzzle pointed in a safe direction. Firearms should be unloaded when not actually in use. I make that mistake, but that's for home defense purposes. Because <clears throat> you never know. Don't rely on your gun's safety. Yeah, don't ever rely on a, on a mechanical safety because mechanical things do fail. What's this say? Keep the safety on until you are actually or absolutely ready to shoot. Yep, that's good. Then we got number four and number five. Be sure of your target and what's beyond it. Use the correct ammunition. This one, man, cannot be stressed enough. Because you don't want to buy an awesome gun like this. And stick some crazy load in here. That could potentially blow the gun up, you know, <laughs> or any firearm. Like taking like a, a I didn't know this, but a, apparently a 410 shotgun. You can put a 44 Magnum round in that gun. Drop it in there, close it, and it will take it just like it's made for it. And I've heard of people shooting those for years and years through their 410s with no issues. But there's a lot of different, like the old trapdoor. The old trapdoor rifles that are 4570. If you put a modern 4570 round into an old school trapdoor, it'll blow the barrel or blow the action apart. They're not designed to deal with the pressures. Okay, so let's not get off topic here. <laughs> Look at that. I can't read that. It says manual, but what's the rest of this mean? Hmm. This is in Spanish, dude. That's why it's so thick, guys. Owner's manual. This works for the 500, the 505, the 510, the 535, the 590, and the 835 pump-action shotguns. And there's all the safety stuff they give you. Look at all these caution signs, man. 
this stuff is printed. It talks about all the parts, everything that goes on inside, how to take it apart. All this different stuff is in here. Make sure you read this book cover to cover. And you memorize everything that's in this. Because, you know, one day you might have a jam or something and you don't know how to clear it. This book will tell you how to clear a stoppage in one of these if you were to have one. And then, of course, every firearm comes with this key lock to lock your gun out of action so that no one can use it without those keys. And it comes in its own little plastic thing labeled Mossberg. That's pretty sweet. So let's talk about some, some stoppages you may experience with any shotgun. I mean, Mossberg, they can have them too. Ammo choices for these. I use uh, Federal Ammo and Remington Ammo, or any other Hornady, anything like that. Winchester, these guns do not like it. You put your Winchester round in there, close it up, pull the trigger. This action will lock. It'll it'll weld itself into the lead of the chamber, and you got to force it open, beat it on the ground, force that thing down. Don't do that. I don't like, well, you can if you want, but I don't like doing it because I feel like it might gall stuff in here. Now, there's jams that can happen. That's considered a jam. That's one of them. Another one is a stovepipe where the shell doesn't eject out and the hole sticks straight up out of the ejection port. Usually, you can, you can rack this back and it'll pull it out. You can grab it with your hand pull it out. But sometimes, you see the lifter right here? Sometimes your shell, on rare occasions, it's happened to me on a Remington once. Uh, the shell will get caught up underneath this lifter. And you'll have a live round in there. And it locks this whole gun up. You can't do nothing with it. Even if you press the action release. You'd have to pop this out. Let the trigger assembly come out. And hopefully you can get in there and get it without severely injuring yourself or, you know, causing a accidental discharge. Those are the, those are the most common that I've experienced on a Mossberg. And I've watched, or any shotgun, and I've watched a, uh, a 500 or a 1,000 round test on one of these. And that happened on this guy, that guy's gun, like once. And he was able to clear it. So read, make sure you just make sure you, you read this book, man. Learn about these things. Learn how it all works. Learn how to take them apart. Learn how to clean them. Because <clears throat> a lot of people will just open this, and then they'll run a cleaning rod up through here, up through the barrel, and they think, oh, you know, I got all the gunpowder out of here. That's all that matters. You have to clean these and lubricate these moving parts. Because if you don't, it can cause jams to happen or some other failures like the elevator it can take your paint off scrubbing against this and cause burrs and it may not make it function properly but i had to get this gun this thing is awesome this is the what i own two mossbergs now and a remington and look at that big net lug man I might order me a bayonet or find one at a gun store to stick on there. That's pretty sick. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. That's about all I have to say about it. This is very close to, uh, to what the military uses. See that screw there in the middle? That's how you adjust your sights. The screw here in the back and the screw up the front is what mounts it to here. Well, to here. Take them screws out. Put your new ones in. Good to go. You can order this part if you own a Mossberg and you want to get one of these. You can order it off of eBay. And I think it's uh, $109. What does that say? Let's see if we can get what this says here. Is that labeled Mossberg? Dude, yeah, that's their factory site. That's cool. I thought maybe they would use the scattergun technology. But no. 
it's labeled Mossberg. That's awesome. As I said, though, it's all the same. Alvo receiver and uh, polymer stock and forend. Polymer trigger guard. Polymer safety button. This gun is physically unloaded. There is no... There is no ammo in it. So that's how you would load this. You just drop your shell in, push it in here, and here, click. And you let it up. And it'll hold it right here. With this lever here. You can't see it, but it's right there. Pretty awesome. I'm proud to have it. I've wanted this exact configuration for so long. So now we can do this. I'll lay that one there. Keep the camera kind of positioned towards the gun here if I can. And we'll get this one down. And we'll put them side by side. 590 civilian model. Or, or a standard model. 590 tactical. Barrel length is 18 and a half on this. And it's 20 on this. This one has no choke. It is cylinder bore. This one has a choke that is cylinder bore. And they're also smooth bore. All my shotguns I own are smooth bore. I do not have a rifled shotgun barrel at all. And slugs out of these, they're accurate, boy. They'll hit anything up to 230 yards. But, I mean, what can you say about Mossberg? They've been around since 1962 for the 500 series, which 590 is part of. And it's my favorite brand. If I could, I'd buy another one. If I can get a 590A1, I'd buy another one and stick it right up here on top of my rack. Because they just never let me down. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Thank you guys for everything on here. The views, the comments, the subscriptions. It's awesome. And I'll holler at you guys in the next video. Take care.